Hey guests, welcome again to another episode of the Investor Types podcast. What we're talking about today is investing in residential property, uh, but actually taking a different approach to the rental and actually working on Airbnb. And I'm here today with a lovely man, Jordan De Jong. What's going on, guys? Welcome, mate. It's How do you pronounce be. your last name? De Jong. It's a silent J. All right, yeah, I love it. It's Dutch. I love it. So this man's got a fe- special place in my heart. <laughs> Basically, uh, brought me on his podcast just a short time ago to talk about our property journeys. And this is how I found out about his property journey. So what Jordan does is Jordan invests in property, big property investor, but actually rents out his properties through Airbnb. Now tell me, mate, why do you do this? I think Airbnb for me, to gain that additional passive income was really the beneficial part. Like I was really wanting to focus on capital growth properties and obviously um, in areas that are potential to grow quickly and more efficiently over time, you know, not even the short term, but in 10 year time. But generally, because uh, rentals lag behind the property prices, right? So if you've got a 12-month contract on a, on a $500,000 house that's leased out at uh, $20,000 per year, if that property increases to $534,000 the next year, but the rental lease is still being leased out at uh, $20,000, that rental is being lagged behind, right? So mm-hmm. you're always behind the ball mark. And if you pick it up at the wrong time in the market or you know the market's too hot you bought it too expensive but you've still got you know eight months left on the contract or lease that's down in a lower low market right rate you can't uh, you know you have to put more additional money into the property you know yeah. it's negatively geared and you're seeing residential yields at the moment trading between two and three percent and that's just not enough not even to to maintain the property one to meet the mortgage repayments number two mm. All right, so you need to look for these yeah outliers. so for me it was a big conundrum of you know you know, I'm still on the corporate ladder. I've still got my wage, my income. I could, um, you know, fund a negatively geared property. But yep. in my mindset, uh, you know, you and I are the same. Like, I don't like losing money. It's just yeah. not a thing. You know, like, <laughs> why would I want to spend one dollar to get thirty cents back? You know what I mean? Oh, I know, so I know. For me, I really wanted to find. You know, it's all about capital growth for me. Like, that's obviously how you make the most of the amount of money. But I obviously wanted to, to pay for itself as well. And Airbnb for me was that sort of strategy that was like, okay, if I can, uh, I based all my um, all my financials on only having a 50% occupancy rate. Mm -hmm. So I did all the numbers and I was like, look, if the place is vacant for half of the time, it's still gonna pay for itself, you know, all of the gas, water, everything else that you need to pay for having an Airbnb. Mm -hmm. And um, even even I factored in a little bit extra just to pay for all the furniture and all that stuff as well. So over a 12 month period, it'll pay for itself and the furniture that I bought, so I'm not going backwards. And I'm still getting that capital growth without having to put extra money in. Right, so for the people that don't know, so basically Airbnb is a platform that's been set up mm-hmm. where people can come on and book their holiday trips a few nights away yeah. and stay in your property that yep. you fit it out yep. you pay for all the bills and we pay for everything yeah so you pay for water gas like you would any other property you're staying in that's yep. your own you pay for all of the living expenses internet there's a lot of things that you have to consider that you don't really think about straight away yeah um, all the furniture which is obviously a massive setup cost um, and yeah, so people come and book your place and it's either in like a tourist destination or like a working hub I'm yep. finding a lot of um, our guests these days are actually working class people because you know there's a big demand for people to come to Melbourne and um, work for three months, they get a job for three months, or a contract for three months, mm-hmm. um, and they need to find a place to stay while they're here. And they're not gonna stay in a hotel because it's small and dingy and they're a bit over it. You know, if they're yep. doing it, if they're doing this nine months of the year, yeah. they get really over hotel rooms. So that's why they want facilities. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. They wanna stay in a good, you know, nice community residential area. Yep. You know, so um, there's a bit of a mixed bag of what you could potentially do with Airbnb. Yep. We've obviously gone down the working route, but um, obviously the holiday destination is a huge one as well. Yeah, and after listening to you, I sort of took the leap and actually started doing Airbnb in one of my own properties. Awesome. I didn't realize what, how much the setup costs were. So yeah. getting all the furniture, making sure you've got towels, making sure you've got some food there, fully equipped house so that someone can come in there, live there mm. and start running running basically just their normal life. Yeah, well, it's a hotel. Like we didn't eat, we did the same thing, right? So our initial setup cost in our first one, it's a two bedroom unit and uh, I think we spent about 12 to 14 grand. So it's actually significant. And then after we had our first guest and they checked out and we had another guest, they checked out at 11 o'clock and we had another guest checking in at three o'clock and we're like, hold on, we don't have another pair of sheets. Like we're gonna have yeah. to wash the sheets and put them back on. We don't have extra towels. We're gonna need, so you know, we rushed to Kmart and bought all these sheets <laughs> and all these towels. And yeah. you actually have to, it's a hotel. Like you yeah. have to be prepared for those quick changeovers and make it easy and strategically set up so that the pain points of Airbnb aren't dramatic. Like you can actually, 
solve them quite easily yep. by having all these things organized. Yeah, but you've got to be very active. So you've got to be there. And at the start, I can imagine, do you, all, do you do all your cleaning or do you get a cleaner to come in? So we do, my wife's an absolute clean freak. Nice. Like she loves a clean area. So yeah. we get a cleaner, but she, she'll spend two hours before the cleaner comes yep. and like two hours after the cleaner goes. So wow. we could hire like a, a maid that would do all of that for us mm-hmm. but because she quite enjoys it it's kind of therapeutic for her good so she'll you know she'll continue doing it. and we've still got like a lawn we've got a backyard we've got plants so i'll be out there cleaning the deck mowing the lawns trimming the plants all that sort of stuff and i kind of enjoy that as well like it's, okay it's a bit of fun so yeah. um we could hire someone to do it a hundred percent of the time we get someone in for about two or three hours, depending on how big the clean is, mm-hmm. and they'll do the bulk of the work. So they'll vacuum, they'll melt, they'll clean the windows, they'll you know clean the stove, all that sort of yeah. back, back breaking stuff that will annoy you over time. But um, my wife even likes to like she'll put the sheets on the bed, yep. and then she'll have like a roller and she'll like roll the sheets in case there's any hair or anything like that. Completely. Wow! So she just goes above and beyond because. As you know, there's nothing worse than like going to a hotel or some, staying somewhere and then like you've got this big hair coming out of you like, oh, that's gross. And you suddenly feel like the whole place is going to be filthy because you've had this one little bad experience. 100%. So definitely active because you have to be on top of it. The, yeah. You know, there's dust behind a drawer or there's, you know, a, a stain still in the toilet. Like you have to deal with that stuff. Yeah. It's not, you, you're, you're a maid most of the time, you know, yeah. really, unless you hire someone else to do it for you. So one of the benefits is that you can actually charge out for the cleaning. Mm-hmm. Right, so that means you can make an extra little clip on top of yep. the actual rent you're getting if you want to do the cleaning yourself yep. or you can use that to pay someone else. Yeah, exactly. However, what you said is, so Airbnb works on a ratings category. So mm-hmm. depending on how good you are as a host or how good your guest is or what people have said about your guest, mm-hmm. um, it goes onto your record. Yes, correct. But what I've realized as a host is that Airbnb really tries to push you into taking anyone to you into your houses. And this made me scared, mm. right? So I'm signed up to Airbnb, I'm ready to rent my place out. They said to me, on your first three people that stay at your property, drop your price by 20%, yep. but we want you to sign up to accept just anyone. Pretty much anyone. And so that, the- the worst thing is even they've got these like little um, milestones or I can't remember the official name, but it's like, you know, you have your first guests, then you've got a 4.8 star rating, then you've got a, you know, you become a super host. Yep. And along the way, they actually secretly, by the way they set what your requirements are, they make you secretly have to do this. So one of the requirements is like, have a cancellation rate of less than 95%. Mm. So you can never cancel anyone because you're gonna go below the 95% and you don't have that you know, next level of milestone, which means you don't turn up in, in search rankings, your listing doesn't get um, appear as often. And it's like this big intricate network of all these requirements that they make you have. And if you fail any of them, then you get significantly lower searches. And that's what you want, you wanna be searched more. Yeah. So it's, it's quite, yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a tough one and you almost have to, you almost are triggered into accepting everyone. There's a little tip that I'll I'll let you know about how you get away from it. So Give me a tip. If, um, so say you've got a guest that books your place and they look a bit iffy, they've got no reviews, they look a bit dodgy, you're not yep. sure, you're uncomfortable. You can actually send them a special offer and what this does is it technically behind the scenes pre-approves their, their offer, right? But if you spend send the special offer, you know, say it was for two nights and you send a special offer back at five grand, they're not gonna accept it, right? Okay. But instantly, you can then retract your special offer and decline their stay. So you don't have to, that's considered an accepting. So it doesn't go towards your, your score or anything like that in the background, but it, it looks like you've accepted, but then you've retracted. Wow. So it's fine. So that's a little trick to get around it if you need to. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, well, because, and the reason, like, you need these tips because if they're forcing you into taking people on, mm. um, or even, so I pre-approve guests and I give them 20, 24 hours, they give me 24 hours to pre-approve the guests. Yep. And well, you can't even look into their profile properly to I see know. exactly who they are. Yeah. So it killed me. And the reason it killed me is because of these horror stories you hear. Yeah. Uh, you hear about parties being had at, yeah. at, um, at Airbnb locations, mm. and then the host is just sort of left sitting there holding their hands going, well now I've got a destroyed property because yeah. someone decided to rent out my property and have a party. Yeah, yeah. Have exactly. you had many things happen? Yeah, we've had a uh, not not anything like really significant, but we have had about two horror stories. So the first one was probably I think it was our third guests and there were four young girl backpackers from Sweden, right? Yeah. And you know, we I think at that time as you said, the discount was applying at like 20% discount for your first stars, right? So they were yeah. getting the, the property at like 80 bucks and yeah. between four of them it's 20 bucks each. It's cheaper than going to a hostel. <laughs> That's too right? cheap. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? So 
Um, yeah, so they stayed. They stayed for about two weeks, and then like when we wa- when we went to go into the property to clean it out, there was like um, cracked eggshells all over the floor, and like there was like stains on the carpet, and like just all this mess everywhere. They don't care about their rating. No, they don't. Yeah. They don't care at all. It was their first stay. They're young girls. They don't. You know, they don't. Maybe they weren't brought up in a house that was generally clean all the time. Stop yep. not blaming them, but you know, they just don't have that sort of standard of living. Okay. And um, a lot of people think it's a hotel. You know what I mean? So they expect you to wash the sheets and clean the house and you can leave a mess and all that sort of stuff yeah. where you know the community around airbnb is really just to um you know look after the house like it's your own like you're coming to stay if you if you're staying wash the sheets put the sh- put the towels away you know get it prepared for the next guest that, that, that's how the friendly community works yeah and the other second horror story that i have had was um having someone local stay in our property so we had a, um, we had a, uh, I think he was like 25 or 26 or something mm-hmm. like that. He said he was from Perth and he was from Melbourne originally and his family still lived in Melbourne. He was like, oh, I'm coming down for my sister's 19th birthday. We want to stay close to the family because it's all going to be, you know, nice and friendly and whatever. Looked, profile picture looked all right. And I was yeah. like, oh, okay, okay, whatever. And we were, we actually had a bit of a gap. So I was like, yeah, I have to book it in because otherwise I'm going to miss out on my occupancy rate, right? Mm-hmm. So I booked him in, he arrives and we've actually, like he arrives, we've got a camera on the front of our door. So it's like, it's called August and basically, um, and it, it picks up on a motion sensor. So as soon as it goes off, you can pick it up on your phone and you can see people walking past. And I've got that cause I've got like a keypad lock. So if oh. they click the doorbell, I can actually speak to them and be like, um, hey, how are you? Welcome to the house. I can unlock the front door for my phone. So it's all like really synchronized. Wow. So it makes it really easy, right? Smart. But on the Smart. benefit sides, I could see who's coming in, if yeah, they look yeah. like their profile, all that sort of stuff. So all good at the start. Like there wasn't, you know, it was just two of them arriving. They came and stayed at the property. Anyway, about three hours later, like their their dad started rocking up, their cousins started rocking up. They, you know, this, this bloody notification thing was going off like 10 times. Like people coming in, coming in, coming in. And then there was like six people at the property, 10 people at the property. I'm like, okay, you know, it's family, but you know, I don't, why can't you go to the family's house? Why do you have to come to the Airbnb? Like, yeah, it's because yeah, I'm so course. protective, yeah, 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 you know? Course. And then, um, so that was fine. They left or whatever. But then at like 3 a.m. that night, I got a notification and then there was like, there was like four people coming in, five people coming in. And that guy had like a beer in his hand and he gave the finger to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and I was actually, I was actually in Sydney at the time and I was up and I was just watching this bloke and I'm like, oh, no. I'm, I'm in trouble here. And you hear those horror stories about, you know, them breaking your house and having big parties and all that sort of stuff. And you get scared. And it's instantly what you think, you uh-huh. know, you're like, oh man, these guys are going to trash my house. So they left it a little bit messy, wasn't too bad, but, um, the, good, the plus side of that was I've actually got an additional guest cost. Yep. So if you don't claim that you've got two or more, like if you claim that you've got two guests coming but there's actually four, mm-hmm. I charge an extra $40 a night per guest, right? If you don't specify it when you're booking. So I actually ping them. I said, hey, um, here's the proof. You've had uh, two, three, four additional people stay on this night. I'm gonna charge you an extra $40 per person per night. And um, the best part about it was they were like, no, 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 we didn't have it. Then Airbnb got involved and I was like, here's the proof. And they were like, oh, okay, yeah, fair enough. They tried to ping them and they didn't actually pay, but Airbnb support was like, hey, we're really sorry about the experience that you have. We'll pay it for them. So they actually paid me for wow. this incident that we had. So that was kind of a, it was a little bit of a win because they didn't want you to have that bad experience. And there's some, you know, benefits and, okay. and they kind of do look after you a little bit. Yep. But yeah, you, you know, if the house was trashed, that, that scenario could have been 10 times worse. No, no, no. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, but you've obviously now implemented some strategies to offset things like that happening. Yeah. How do you advertise it? Like you have a minimum minimum stay, minimum night stay yeah. uh, for your Airbnb. How does that yep. work? Explain it to me a little bit. Yeah. So and who are you targeting? Yeah. For me directly, as I said before, because um, we're in that sort of working area, that's sort of my demographics. Mm-hmm. So um, it's not a holiday destination. It's not a place to go party. It's working class people who want, you know, a place to cook their meals and sleep there at night. And even if they're on night shift or something like that, it's easy access all that sort of really you know, working community. Mm-hmm. And the way I sort of get that is I've got, um, I've got a four night minimum stay. So people can't come on a Friday and leave on a Sunday, which is normally that sort of party, come to Melbourne, go to the casino, you know, those type of people. Yeah, yeah that's right. right. It's too far away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, too hard. So, I mean, you're still going to get people that come for four nights for that sort of stuff, but you know, you're not getting the one nighters who are trying to find a place to throw a party because mm-hmm. um, it's in their local area. So, and that's another thing that I do. I don't generally accept people or like, I'll ask people, hey, you know, are you from Melbourne? Why are you coming to stay in Melbourne? And yeah, to be honest, I'm at that point now where like, if I'm really nervous about who 
who's coming to stay, like, I'm happy to decline. I'm happy to be like, I, I'm sorry, like, I don't think you're a good fit for our place or whatever. And I'll actually contact Airbnb and say, hey, um, this is the reason I declined. And sometimes they'll be like, oh, okay, fair enough. And I'll use that little secret trick I told you before about special offer and decline. Yep. And that way I can get away with it without affecting my, you know, ranking of the milestones. Um, so that's one little trick. And then, yeah, just, just asking questions like, you know, how long are you staying for? Who are you bringing? Why are you staying? All these sort of things. Don't be intrusive, ask yep. them nicely. Yep. But um, I think you get a good understanding of w what their intentions might be for staying in your property. Yeah. And I, once you're comfortable with that, you never know. Like you, you could be drug dealers coming to stay at your property and you, you, won't, have an, you won't have an idea about, they can uh, lie to you right. completely, you yep, know yep. what I mean? But I think, um, you know, check for reviews as well. So if they've got, you know, some solid history of reviews, that's all five star and great great people to look after, you'll, you'll be fine. If, mm -hmm. you, if you're getting accounts that have just been set up yesterday and you know their profile picture looks a bit dodgy and they've got zero <laughs> reviews, it's a bit of a red flag. Yeah, that's right, so watch out for that. <laughs> yeah. you know, I've started, I've started um, actually having calls with people, so making phone calls or oh, even video wow. calls, so using WhatsApp. Yep. I had a lady from Singapore book the place and I'm like, yep. okay, well, I don't really trust this, let's see what happens. Yeah. Uh, gave her a video call on WhatsApp and was able to chat to her face to face. Wow. So it gave awesome. me a lot more confidence yeah. in knowing that my place hopefully won't, nothing yeah. Will happen. Nothing will happen. Yeah, but yeah. we'll see what happens. So we know that Airbnb with your it's different to your your general like residential property investment strategy where you buy a property, you get a tenant in there that's hopefully in there for twelve months, might stay there for five years. Yeah. You might have rent increases, you might not. But generally nowadays you're losing cash yeah. on the investment. Yeah. Right? So Airbnb, you really try to find that extra little bit of income, but you take a risk because there might be a chance that you might not get that vacancy. Yeah. Or yeah. you might not get that occupancy because you might the property might, might be vacant for more than 50% of the time. Yeah. Who knows? Or you might start getting bad reviews. Yeah, Let's exactly. hope not. not if you've yeah. you got a clean, clean, uh, a clean wife or a wife <laughs> that's a clean freak. Um, but let's say that if you're talking to people out there and yeah. they go, look, Jordan, I want to do Airbnb properties. I want to rent out my property through Airbnb. Yep. What sort of a person do you think they need to be? What would be their, who, what sort of investor type would they be? Yeah, I think for me, um, so I'm a data scientist by trade, right? And I'm very analytical. I overanalyze anything. So as I was saying before, like my number one for investing is high capital growth. Like I know that's where I'm going to make the most amount of money over time, right? Yep. So I think if you're looking for a, a capital growth area, um, but you don't like those rental returns and you need some extra additional income, it's mm -hmm. gonna be active income and yep. you've got a bit of free time, or you can hire a property manager to do it all for you, but you're gonna cop a little bit of a higher fee, then um, definitely try and go for the Airbnb route through that. So if, if, you, if you're uh, looking for capital growth, but you don't wanna be paying negative uh, gearing, um, you don't have you know solid income just in case, but you're, you're happy to take a little bit of a risk with potentially the property getting damaged, worst case scenario, which there's plenty of insurances for as well, so they yep. can sort of save themselves from there a little bit. Um, but yeah, active investor, capital growth, um, additional income. So uh, we actually, our properties actually completely pay for themselves pr plus bring in about a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a month on top of that. So right. if you're looking for a bit of an extra way to save or bring some more money into the offset account so that you're paying less interest, it's a good way to do so. Yeah, but the main thing is you've got to be you've got to be willing to take on that mm. extra little bit of risk just in case you got to be willing to tend to the property That's if right. something happens. That's right. You can hire a property manager, but you need to still be there in case something does happen. Go yeah. and tend to something if what, something happens. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, hiring that property manager would solve this issue, but also like, you know, we have to plan our holidays around when our guests are staying now. So if a guest checks out, we can't go away during that period because we've got to clean the house and make it active. So you just be in that mindset that it's a it's a job. It's a job. Yeah. It's not it's not a passive income source. It's an active income source. You have to be readily available all the time. If you're off in Sydney while you've got an Airbnb in Melbourne and the the guests are calling you say, hey, I can't get into the front door because your electronic doorbell system isn't working, I'm in trouble. Like I have yeah. to go to the property within ten minutes, otherwise they're locked out the front. And you know I'm going to get a bad review from it. So little things like that you have to be prepared mm -hmm. for. Amazing, amazing man. So there's there's one way that Jordan's using um, Airbnb strategy through property investing to generate some extra income. Um, thanks a lot for listening. I really appreciate it, Jordan, mate. Thank you very much for coming on. I look forward to chatting in the future. Thanks for having me, mate. It's great to catch up with you again. All right, thanks. See you guys.